Uh, I think it was much less stressful on the birds and it actually probably went just about as fast. So, lesson learned. The chicken tractor is all prepped and ready to receive the chicks. Uh, the only thing I gotta do is add feed. So everything else is done. Now I'm gonna hook up the brooder. And since it's on a trailer frame, I'm gonna drive it over there. That's the easiest way to move chicks out of here and into there for, for me. So that, put them in the chicken tractor, set up the new fence and get ready to go. The new fencing material is still from Premier One. So it's not that dissimilar from what I already had. So I've got a hundred foot length right here of the uh, poultry netting. This is the new Energizer. All right, so it does 30% more output than the old, uh, the old Energizer for the fencing. Uh, and this is what they're including now in their package when they sell you a package deal. Uh, I think that's good. Uh, the IntelliShock 60 served as well for a little while, but I started having issues with battery charge and power of the surge. And I, I just think I wasn't managing it correctly. Uh, I had some other issues with the motherboard burning out and some other things. Now, Premier One was great. They would send me new parts like, boom, here you go, buddy. Uh, but I'm going to try this new system and see if it has uh, better long-term uh, results. Drove down, swing a wide turn so that the side of the brooder that has uh, these chicks in it faces the door of the chicken tractor. Boink. Uh, once I open this up, I'll put both of these posts in to hold it up at its highest level. And these guys will get really feisty and start jumping around. But my goal is just to try and grab two at a time, stick them in here so they're out of the way. You can see I don't have any feed in there yet. I want them to see me put the feed in place once they're there. So they start associating that. So they'll associate a move with feed showing up because I'm going to move the chicken tractor, you know, probably at least once a day, probably twice a day as they get older. Uh, the water's all set in the back. And the thing I need to be careful of is that I don't step on my newly installed PVC guard at the bottom. Because if I break that while I'm doing this, I'm just going to be, I don't know, disappointed. All right, let's do this. We found the food no problem. They'll find the water themselves as well. All right, that was a good move. You know, I was gonna pull them out two at a time because that's what we always do when it's Dev and I together. It's just me today, so I thought, let's slow it down, do one at a time. That way I can close the brooder door in between and still have a hand free to open it up afterwards. And honestly, I found that by moving very slowly in there and just taking one chick at a time, no stress, no fuss, no muss, uh, I think it was much less stressful on the birds and it actually probably went just about as fast. So, lesson learned. It is all set up. Got the new fence out, post, and the new Energizer. Slightly different from the old Energizer. Still supposed to be a 12 volt system. This one's called Solar Stop 80. The other one was a IntelliShock 60. And the 80 implies how much power is going down the line. So the basic design for this is different. The other one was a square box with an adjustable solar panel that sat on top of it. Um, you still got a positive and negative output. Um, this, for this model, right, th the way it works is your positive line goes to the fence, right? Clips onto the, the alligator clip goes onto the fence to a lead and your negative goes to your grounding rod. In this case, it is a separate grounding rod, a T-handle that you drive in or hammer in and that becomes your, your ground. On the old one, it was a horseshoe shaped set of prongs that you forced into the ground. And then the box itself slid onto the top, the cross member of that, and kept it off the ground. I don't think that's a big deal. It's, uh, 
I don't think it's a big deal, but it, it was just nice. It was one complete package all in one piece. This takes a little more work off on the side. Um, it also comes with a digital tester. Um, and so what you do is uh, you plug this end into the ground. This is your ground for it. Let's stick it down in there. And then you have a little digital read and you take this and you just touch it to the fence where you want to find out how hot it is. And it gives you a reading. So 0 0.8. So that's, that's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. Debbie and I are standing out in the middle of our wetland. That's how dry we are right now. And uh, we sort of discovered that this was passable. And so we decided since we've never been out here, we want to come take a look. Lots of little areas of mud and muck. Our house is over there on the other side of those trees. And our land continues all the way to those trees and then about 100 yards beyond. Lots of raccoon activity out here. It's probably very good uh, hunting for them for slugs and I don't know, whatever they eat. All right, so we're along the east border. There's another dugout section of water. And then you can see the neighbors got a fence up there for their portion that, that borders us. I'm trying to talk and walk and video and... This is actually really quagmire-ish. I don't know if we're gonna get through here. But we think that this was dug. Oh, a frog just peeped and ran in there. This whole thing was dug at some point in the past in order to create drainage, better drainage for the middle to reduce flood likelihood. You got coyote tracks? Because so. here's a whole bunch more raccoon. Right there. Oh, yep, that would, that looks promising. That's some scat right yeah. there too. It's way bigger than raccoon. All right, so we've come out on the north side. We can see this property here from walking on our road, which is way over there. We look across the wetland and we see their property. Oops, we see that property and it rises up a hill to the house. But this is the raccoon superhighway. Look at this. <laughs> this is a main interchange on their highway. And right off into the wetland. Well, quasi wetland. Muckland. But you come down and you got, there's an off ramp, here's an off ramp, there's an off ramp, straight, another off ramp. It's the mixing bowl south of DC in Alexandria. You think? Does that look like a dead tree or is that a fence post out there in the middle? And remember, I weigh a few pounds more than you. So if I disappear, <laughs> you got to come get me. Uh, for reference, we started in that corner over there. So we're a diagonally on the wetland from where we started. And our road goes All right. that we found prints of the sandhill cranes who are also out here looking for stuff. All right, what did you find? Doing the Vanna White. Doing the Vanna White? A very old fence post. Fence post, which is fun because if we come down this way, I'm next to an old broken fence post. And when I go up, there's more and more. Well, we maneuvered our way across that, came this way to these trees right here, then went into the woods, came out, and now we're on our, we're on our farm road because we didn't want to try and navigate that. So that was pretty cool. Glad we did that. Like that? Yeah. It's always good to learn new things about your property. All right, got to go collect eggs and do the evening chores. All right, tonight we'll find out how they're doing. Here's something I like. Look at these guys. They're all laying down in the middle near the food as opposed to up against the edge. I think that's a great thing. So keep our fingers crossed that the combination of the fence and the new physical barrier have a desired effect and just keep these guys in good shape. One other thing about this, this, yes, yeah, I got that. One other thing about it is it has two settings. So it has uh, like a power save mode where it uses a lower intensity pulse. And then you have the full mode where it's putting full juice into the, into the wires. So what I'm trying out is during the day using the low power setting. So there is some protection from a shock, but this is not really the time, you know, daytime is not really when I'm having trouble losing chicks, it's at night. This way the system can operate 
but still the solar panel is going to generate enough to give a little boost to the battery throughout the day. And then at night, full hit. We'll just have this thing go in full mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it. Let's see if we can watch it happen because he's flashing green, which tells me it's running. So, okay, to off and now full up. All right, and so now it is in the full boost mode. And uh, we'll check in the morning and see how things look. It's raining, finally. Nobody's mad about it. See all the chicks and chickens and the steers and me, we're all out in the rain just fine doing our thing. It's just nice to have some coming down. It's been a while. So uh, it's come down a little bit hard, but not so hard as to cause any major flooding. We've had a few areas that have puddled up, but you know, after that, it uh, took a little pause in the rain, ground drank it in. So, uh, so far, so good. Just the right amount. We'd like to get more, that's for sure. You know, we lost another hen to a bobcat. And uh, that made me pretty mad. So I I uh, armored up and headed into the woods. And I uh, was out there for about 40, 45 minutes. And I found him or her, but I could not get a clean shot. So I didn't take it. Uh, I want to make sure I do the job right the first time. And uh, I got a general idea where where it's been bedding down. So I'll keep an eye on it and uh, they may move on. They tend to transit through, which is why we lose things in clusters. But uh, I'll keep an eye and if it sticks around then I may have to dispatch it. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. The other thing I'm doing is I gotta get more hay. That's a necessity because, because it's been so dry I've had a couple of passes out here on the, on the pasture areas and the grass. Cows eat it down doing their job, but without the rain, it just wasn't growing back. So I've had them in that whole area over there, which I'm just going to call sacrificial pasture, something, where they could tromp that all day long, and then I bring them hay. Well, that's a logistics thing, so i got to have plenty of hay to do it. I got some in the barn, and I still got a pretty good stack going over there but I'd like to get a whole bunch more in there. I've been using square bales. Now well, they're actually rectangles. Um, but those, you know, to replace, are looking at, you know, $8 a piece. And that's pretty expensive. And uh, even for bahia, you know, six to $8, even for bahia, which is not considered the most nutritious of the grasses. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna try and get some round bales, I think. I don't know, I'm still working on it. I just gotta figure out how to take them apart in a way that lets me feed just the right amount to the steers. Uh, and that's significantly less expensive than trying to buy 50 pound bales. I'll just buy one 900 pound bale, round bale. And uh, I'll probably get four or five of those, store them up and then just figure out how to unwind them and take that stuff out. Meanwhile, a lot of the chicken manure and other stuff has been going into the garden beds to make those ready for planting at some point. I'm not sure when it's gonna happen. But okay, rain's starting to come down a lot more now. So I'm gonna be a little bit smart. I'm gonna go in, maybe use this time to try and make this video. So if I did that, you're seeing this now and I will say that's it from here. We'll talk to you guys later.